Hello, hello, hello. We're here with Dr. Peter Wishney. Uh, he is the owner of Family Foot and Ankle Specialist. It's crazy. I got to look down to read it. We've been working together for over a year. <laughs> but uh, those long titles always get me, but I'm glad that you're here. Dr. Wishney is the man. He is a podiatrist. He's been in business for over 30 years. Uh, I think you, ha you have two locations and you are, let me get it right, a practice management specialist. You help other podiatrists learn how to run a business. I got Absolutely. it. Absolutely. That's right. Awesome. You got it. Buddy. Awesome. awesome. Well, you're the man and I admire you. So I'm looking forward to this interview. I think you're going to have a lot that you're going to be able to share with the, our listeners. So let's get right to it. I'm going to give you the same questions I give everybody, although okay. I already know who you are. Someone might not know, even though you've written books too. I forgot about that. That's right. right. So tell us uh, who you are and tell us a little bit about your business. From your okay. So thank you for having me first, Mark. Appreciate it. Um, yes, we have been working for a year. You're fantastic. I will tell you. Um, and I'm going to talk about this later, hopefully, but a coach needs a coach. And even though you're you know, my accountant and bookkeeper, you are um, – you're the man. You're like keeping me focused and you're my coach. You tell me where to put the money. I know how to make it. You tell me how to keep it. So that's great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Um, I'm, as Mark says, I'm a podiatrist for over 30 years in central New Jersey. My main location is Piscataway and I have another office in Hillsboro, New Jersey. And um, my key, my, my, Key thing is that I never worked for anyone. I got out of my residency and rent and I bought a practice and I spent 30 years trying to figure out how to do that. Awesome. So and besides that, while I figured it out, I wrote a book uh, recently and um, it's called The Podiatry Practice Business Solution. And, um, and then um, I've, I consult over, I consult a bunch of podiatrists, over 50, 60 podiatrists in the in the country and uh, teaching them how to really have more time and make more money because as a professional as you know mark and a business owner we spend a lot of time on the business but the real money is working the real money is making is working on the business not in the business so we spend a lot of time in the business and we have to teach people how to work on the business have more time for the families we only own a business for one reason, to give the life we so deserve and desire. That's it. That's the purpose of it. Amen. Preach, preach. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, too, because I always say, and I didn't know this. I started business, you know, oh, I think I could do a tax return. That's how I started. You know, and I'm working my, like a dog getting these things. Done. And it's like, that's not the way to profitability. You have to learn how to work on the business instead of just in the business. And I think every good coach, every good advisor is trying to continue to steer their owners on focusing on the business. Our natural inclination is to work in the business. And so, you know, I, I know that's what you do. Uh, you are what one of my other interviewees said a while back, a rainmaker. And that's really the key to growing business. So I'm glad that you, sh you shared that with us. And you said, and I just want to get this straight because I think it's important. You wrote not just one book, you wrote two books. I've read your other book on running a successful podiatry practice. So what, what I think is important is that once you learn the secret, you share it, right? Right, share exactly. It. Awesome, awesome. So now, <clears throat> what role do you play in your businesses? I mean, we talk, I, I already shot my mouth off and said Rainmaker, but what right. role do you play? Right, so... Um... Uh, I am still a full-time podiatrist in the sense that I work um, Mondays and Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, I do surgeries on Fridays, even though I haven't been in the operating room for about five or six weeks now because all my cases are basically elective. Um, okay. And Wednesdays, like you said, this is a term that I learned. I've been doing practice over 30 years, so for most 29 of the 30 years, I've had Wednesdays as my rainmaker day. Um, and it's just like, you know, when you're working all day and you're seeing patients and working with clients, you say, you know what, you come up with ideas as you're doing it and, or you're like, oh, this needs to get better or I don't like this. But when do you have time to actually fix what you want to fix or expand what you want to expand? And I have a little black book in my lab coat 
and I write down any idea that I comes to my mind because you could be talking to a patient that yeah I could be doing this and I write it down and leave it in my lab coat and on Wednesdays I take it out and I, I, that's when I work on it. I work with uh, my financial person. That's when you and I meet every other Wednesday. And uh, I work with my marketing uh, person. And and basically all I do is I'm a coach. I say, okay, that's great ideas. Okay, then who's going to implement it? Who's going to, when is it going to get done? And have them be accountable to you. So that's why I'm a coach. I make the game plan with the team. And then we just go out and play the game. Awesome, awesome. Can I, I mean, I, I have a list of questions, but sure. when I get a, a, a jewel, I, I kind of like – key in on that jewel because I think that's what people want to listen to. Mm -hmm. So can we talk a little bit more? I'm going to digress. You sure. said something that I think was profound. You have a rainmaker day. Right. A rainmaker right. day. That's interesting because I have a day too. I used, I used to, I call it the Black Friday. I just laid at home and did nothing. But maybe <laughs> if I want to, I'm just saying, just saying, Doc, after taxes, I lay home and do nothing and just, you know, work on my new quaff. But um, you mentioned rainmaker day. So do you find that to be valuable to your business to just stop everything and just focus on growth? Yes, yeah. it's uh, you need that because you end up then if you don't do that when you, and if you do it if you don't do it during the week you end up like working on the weekends if you really want to get these things done or they usually what happens is they don't get done and if you realize that working on your business will make you more money than working in the business. Like who makes more money? The, the baker, the person baking the goods or the owner of the bakery. Now, sometimes mm -hmm. that's both. You're the baker and the owner, but it doesn't grow until you become a full fledged owner as a podiatrist and a, and a doctor. Well, I still have to see patients. Uh, I mean, and I am sort of, I had another doc, for this starting the summer, and the goal is to shorten my hours, my personal hours, expand the practices hours. Okay, so we'll be making more money by expanding the hours, and I will work less. So I'm going to be 60 in July, and it's time to start like working on the other passions of my life, the other chapters in my life that I want to do. And I love seeing patients, but when you deal with public the, i don't care what the patients clients customers you have to be on top of your game every single day and if you don't take that rainmaker day you're not refreshed when you like have the extra day where you're just sitting and just creating you can't create when you're baking the creative the creativity comes prior to the baking oh i want to make these kind of cookies and then you just then you just do it okay right. so you can't so you have to put the plans and systems in place and that's the key about your Rainmaker Day. The biggest mistake that people do is they wake up, maybe wake up a little bit later than the usual. I got my day, I got it all day. Next thing you know, it's four o'clock and you have nothing oh. done, right? Yep, yep, yep. You have, you have to plan your Rainmaker Day. And when I'm most effective, I have this time cube and it has different numbers on it, like 30, 15, 45, 60, and that's minutes. And you just mm -hmm. turn it. And I say, okay, for the next 60 minutes, I'm working on this and only this, let's say marketing. I'm working on marketing for 60 minutes. Nice. It stops, I take a 10 minute break, and I work on something else. But I already have what I wanna do planned out. Okay, from the moment I wake up to my workout, to everything. And that to me is the, the key, you know, to get the things done. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for that, Jewel. I think that's gonna be something that a lot of people are gonna say, man, I, I never thought about that Rainmaker Day. Especially newer business owners, you know, because they're just so focused on trying to get everything done. Uh, what I learned in practice over the years is, you know, look, this does a, a task for a client does not have to be done right now, this very second. If you push it off, the client doesn't know as long as you're reasonable with your with what you do. You you you. I like to set expectations. Hey, you'll get this back. Even a, a profitability report that I do for clients. We have a meeting. We do a strategy session. We talk about all the things that we're going to do to get you going to the next level. And then I say, okay, I'm going to put this all together in a report. And they say, okay. And I set the expectation. You'll get it back in three days, which means that I don't have to drop the phone and start getting the report together. Mm -hmm. We have time because we always have to figure out where our business comes in. I like to say that our business needs to be our number one client. And that makes a big difference. That's what the Rainmaker Day sounds like it's all about. So appreciate it. Exactly. That. 
So now you said it, but I want to get it clear. You said you've been practicing. How long have you been in business? Um, 30 and a half years. <laughs> 30 and a half years. So when you talk about these things, people should be like, yeah, okay, that's longevity. Uh, that's <laughs> That's longer than a lot of singing careers. <laughs> that's, pers that's persistence. That's all that. Is. That's persistence. Um, let's see. Be before I digress, what's your business phone number just in case someone wants to call you? Sure. 732 968 3833. Okay. Now, every time I do this, I act like it's me hearing the podcast for the first time. And I said, man, I want to call him. He just gave me the number, but I just got the pen. So say it one more time. Sure. 732 9683833 Awesome. Now we got it. Now hopefully you wrote it down ladies and gentlemen. All you're going to have to hit the back button and that bites. Back button's bite. <laughs> okay. So, what makes you an expert in your field? Uh well the two fields here. So the podiatry part, well that's sort of easy. Uh, I went to school. <laughs> <laughs> that's, good. I, that's good that's good i spent a lot of money studying my butt off for four years um i went to uh, first i went to stony brook uh university uh in stony brook long island for college and then i went to the california college of podiatric medicine in san francisco and then i did a a one-year um a foot surgery um residency in queens which is now part of flushing hospital and my second year, I did a fellowship of foot and ankle uh, surgery at Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem, Israel. Wow. And then, then I was looking to work for somebody. Um, and then uh, my ex-wife says, you'd be better off owning your own place because she knows I like to take charge. <laughs> okay. okay. So um, I found, a, I'm from New York City, if you can't tell from my accent, I'm from Manhattan, Washington Heights, New York. Oh, you never told me that, Doc. <laughs> I'm from Manhattan too, you know. I'm from Harlem. I'm low. Yes. I'm right below you. <laughs> yes, that's right. I grew. I grew up at 200th Street. Oh, okay. Uh, One four five. I guess that's why we vibe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's great. And then um, I, my ex-wife's grandmother knew of a realtor who found a place in Piscataway, New Jersey, which I never heard of. I went okay. to look at it and look at the area, and um, I'm 29 years old. I had $100,000 in student debt. I took out a $100,000 loan to buy this practice and another $100,000 in a credit line because I had nothing in the bank because I'm 29 wow. years old, you know, and my father's right. loan on. And, uh, and so I um, got $300,000 in debt. I, I've seen lots of podiatrists run their practice. And um, I started from basically scratch. I mean, even though there were patients there, there weren't that, that many patients. Wow. So, yeah, so that's, so then just from um, going to seminars and learning and trial and error, you know, um, you never fail. You just have learning experiences, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> learning what not to do, just as important learning of what to do. So I had a bunch of those. And um, then, um, I've always wanted to help other doctors, um, not make the same mistakes I made at the beginning. So, um, I got involved in, um, uh, writing, I have a minor in journalism, so I write on, um, uh, just, just areas of your practice, you know, from answering the phone to hiring the right people, having great customer service, staying on time, which is an issue with doctors, right? Mm. So, all right write all about that stuff and um i nice. really enjoy that aspect as much nice nice so you answered a couple of questions you talked about how you uh, why you're an expert we already know that but you also talked about that leap of faith like what made you decide to go from to become an owner so sometimes we get great ideas from others but it's up to us as an owner to implement it, right your, your ex right. could have said hey you need to work and you know you need to start your own and you could have been like yeah but you know uh i i think i'm gonna go this route I'm, i feel the comfort of because what you did was you got out, it sounds like you got out of your comfort zone oh, i could yeah. just get a paycheck and be and be very well paid or compensated as a doctor but no, no i'm gonna take this leap of faith and i'm gonna believe in myself and so you mm -hmm. took that leap you took that debt you bought that practice and then 29 years later here you yeah. are so how yeah. do you define when we think about that you know I, I would ask you the question i hope i'm right how do you define success are you successful 
Yes, yes. Well, I think I am, and I, this is how you define it. This is an, a definition by a guy named Earl Nightingale. I don't know if you ever heard of Earl Nightingale, but uh, mm -hmm. if you, um, he owned a company called Nightingale Covenant, and mm -hmm. Covenant, yeah, I think it's called, and you might have heard of a guy named Napoleon Hill. Oh, yes. Rich, right? That's right. So um, he's a, uh, I don't know who came first. I think, I think Napoleon came first and then Earl. Um, but he housed, all the great, um, you know, books like um, Napoleon Hill, all the motivational okay. business kind of books like that. And he, he has, um, you should just Google him and go to YouTube mm -hmm. and listen to some of his uh, audio. He's been long gone, but his voice is deep. And he's actually the, the original author of, uh, of uh, what's that? Um, um, as a, not, there's a book called As a Man Thinking, but that's not what I'm talking about. That's um, what did so um, I don't know. He's just um, I, f I forget, but here's a, here's the definition. The definition is success is a progressive realization of a worthy ideal. A oh. progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Basically, Love. taking something that's worthy to you and continue to forge ahead and and can and never stop. Just keep on going till you get where you want to go. And um, that's success. Love success it. is not the money in the bag. It's just like, I don't know, to me, it's like having ambition and being, um, you know, just, just continue to striving to be the best every single day. That, right. That's success. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause you for one second because at the end, there's going to be a pop quiz. Okay. I'm going to see if you remember that quote because I want to hear that one one more time. I write it down. This quote. Head, yeah, yeah. Right? Now it's interesting because I, I always say, you know, success is not a it's not a destination, right? It's a journey, and right. and so it's like that. I, I love it. So you are successful um, because you have been successfully on this this path. I love that. Um, you mentioned how you make it possible. How do you continue to make your success a reality for you? Okay, so. Um, I think the best way to answer that is my daily routine. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, the thing I, when I was younger, I was always for some reason in school, I needed, I needed systems in place. I needed to like, this is, I'm going to study this subject this time. I'm going to study that subject this hour. And I just, just need that. And some people just like want to be free. I'm going to wake up and decide what I'm going to do today. Or I'm going to decide yes. what I'm going to study on or whatever. And I think freedom, to me, personally for me, freedom comes from having organization. Yes. Okay, because when you, so when you are unorganized and you have a lot of stuff to do, that leads to anxiety. And anxiety is all about not having clarity in your life. So I get all crazy and anxious when I don't have that clarity. So as soon as I feel it, I sit down and I have a piece of paper and a pen and saying, what do I really need to do now? And mm -hmm. all those things in my head, get it out of my head and put it on paper and then organize it. So my routine is I wake up usually around 4.30 in the morning. Oh, I have, oh <laughs> this was hard. This was really hard. I'm not a morning person. Two glasses of water. I have my coffee with my brain MCT oil in there to wake it up. And, um, and then I, I go through a gratitude journal. I write down three things I'm grateful for, three to five things I'm grateful for and why. Okay. Um, because you can't have anxiety. You can't be afraid. You can't have fear and anxiety while being grateful at the same okay. time. Nice. So gratitude takes care of the fears and anxieties. So being grateful, especially in a time of a pandemic, you can sit around and think about all the stuff that's going in your brain you know, what's out there and whatever, or you can just say, this is focus on what you have and be grateful, not what you don't have or what you're missing. Like, a, like we were talking about having a good beer at a bar, you know, or mm -hmm. a concert <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, so then for after that, I have, uh, I, uh, uh, what's the next thing? So the next thing is I read, I have these gold cards, my goals. Uh, my goals and my affirmations. So one of my affirmations, one of the things in my goal cards is the definition of success. I read that every day. Ah. Okay. 
So that's why I know about heart. And then the other thing is, another, one of my other cards I want to share is um, things come easy to me. To me, that's one of my major cards because, so Mark, anytime you try a new task or uh, mm -hmm. you have to do something, going, I don't have time to do that right now because that's going to take me probably a couple of hours and I don't want to start that project or whatever it is because I don't have the time and I don't want to start and stop. So I'm going to wait till I have a couple of hours. And then mm -hmm. the moment you decide that I'm going to do it now, it only took you half an hour. Right. And right. you go, why did I wait so long? You ever had that experience? Mm -hmm. so, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I write things come easy to me because it's like, okay, let's just go do it now because it's really not going to take that long. Things come easy. Mm -hmm. um, so I read those cards. I look at my planner. Um, I through my planner, I go through the top three things I'm going to do today. That if I get nice. nothing else done, but if I do those nice. three things, nice, um, it's going to be a great day. And those three things nice. correlate to my goals of all areas of my life, not just my business, but um, health, um, financial relationships. You know, being a father, all those um, goals. Um, mm -hmm. The three things that relate to that, and you don't do everything all at once. Right. But if you just, there's a great book, by the way, um, The One Thing. And um, so if you just do that one thing every day, you know, you get to where you want to go, you know. Gotcha. Gotcha. So. Yeah, it's interesting. I was um, talking to another coach at one point, and, and he does that. He actually does a whole training on just one thing. Just get one thing accomplished, right? Mm -hmm. So even with when I'm working with clients, you know, everybody has a million. I think that might be the entrepreneurial, um, what's the word, curse. Most mm -hmm. of us have all these different ideas. That's kind of why we're not content to be an employee. I feel like an employee, you just tell the employee what to do. They do it. They get their check. They go home. Entrepreneurs are always like, I can't just be restricted. So it's a blessing right. and a curse right. because now I've got 40 things. And so like what you just said, you know, take that list, filter it down, find the three things or the one thing or the two things you're going to do, accomplish right. that, check it off and move forward. So I think that that's really uh, important, right? That, we, that we're able to filter our entire list. It doesn't mean other things don't get done, but prioritize, you know, put it in its right location and then you will find progress. So I love that. I love that tidbit. But you, I jumped in on your, your party. So the re that's your routine that you do. What else do you do? Um, oh, did I talk too much? So. <laughs> no, no, you know, you didn't All right, stop. I didn't mind. What else? Say, what else do I do um, to lead to success? Yes, and I'll tell you. Um, when it comes to actually the business part, the same thing. Um, protocols and systems need to be not only done but have to be written down. And I don't know why I did this, Mark, but I had like um, a month off between. Um, um, looking at the practice I was going to buy and then going to the bank and after the bank said yes, there was a month before closing for right. the office. I don't know what it is, but I just like, maybe someone said to me, well, someone's going to answer the phone. Who's going to answer the phone and how are they going to answer the phone? So that's great. That's great. So I started writing down these little things and then I have this manual now for like 500 pages, wow. which is divided into little manuals for each staff member. Beautiful. And we train off that manual. Yes. And, and I guess here is, I think, the biggest thing that we need to do as business owners, that I don't care what business you're in, doesn't get done. Um, and that is not just proper training. That might be done. But something that I learned from Disney, I'm a big Disney, I, I don't care about going to Disney because I don't like the lines and I don't have grandkids. Right, right. Kids are older, but that's okay. But I, when it, how to run a business, how to have – how to have people spend a lot of money and love going there. That's like Disney. It's like, oh, it's so, so expensive, but they keep on going back every year. And, that's, that's <laughs> um, and they actually retrain their employees monthly. And I have oh. a stupid little corny joke here. And that is they keep on training and retraining Mickey because if they don't retrain Mickey, Mickey becomes goofy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. I love it. That's cool. It is. <laughs> because people, even though they know how to do it, for, say, oh, she's been doing it for 20 years. The next day, she does something and you you say to yourself, where did she learn to do that? I never told her to do that. Where did that come from? And it's like, and like, and then you ask them and they go, oh, that's how I always do it. And you're like, 
Well, no, you didn't. I've seen you do it because people will do what's comfortable for them Absolutely. at that moment. Now, they're not trying to like undermine you. It's I just, know. At right. that moment, they have to make decisions and they might change something, mm -hmm. which if it's a little thing, no big deal. But if it's right. something that could cause a problem, and usually that problem happens four to six weeks later. And in my business, it would be like you forgot to give the someone paid you cash for their deductible or copay, and you didn't give them a receipt. Mm. Okay, and then they were so busy, forgot to log in the cash payment into the system into the computer. Then the right. financial person sees that person didn't pay, didn't really pay, calls them up and say, "Oh, I paid that. I paid that in cash." Now. One or two things happens. She didn't really pay, and you can't say, "Well, you didn't pay." I don't have any record of it. Call it a liar. Then you lose a customer. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, or you just let it go and just like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. look for the receipt. There's no receipt, and just make sure they keep. It. You know, it's a little thing, but a little thing because the problem now with the client or a patient, it, it can impact. Now really ticked off at you and yeah, writes yeah, a bad yeah. review. Mm -hmm. So, and then so if they are messing up in their system, right? It can happen again and again. That's why the retraining, right? right? So that's, right. that's powerful. Yeah, in my office I have, and I have a small practice, I mean, small office, but I have what I call a playbook, right? So mm -hmm. same thing. Years ago, I realized, man, I gotta have systems. I can't do it one way or have my assistant do it one way and then I do it a different way. You, you've gotta have these systems. And if it's written down, it's scripted, it just makes life easier. Then you can even take out these sections and say, okay, I've got this accounts payable system and I hire a new person here start reading this right and it allows you to it gives you that scalability so that's really cool right. um, but the retraining is also valuable because you're right we all kind of get into our groove and it's very easy to digress from what someone else has scripted to what we feel comfortable with so I like that too uh, and that's what helps you um, stay successful in business awesome here's my next question for you um, I almost want to answer it for you based on something else you said, but I'm going to have to let you do it because you're the boss. What do you think is the single most important quality needed to be a successful business owner? Um, it, the, the single most important quality is, is positive mindset mixed in with persistence. You know, life is um, ups and downs and you're going to have things that, you can control and things you can't control. Like right now, the pandemic, we can't control that. Okay? Right. But you can sit back and just let things play out, or you can refocus, repivot, uh, remarket, and use use that information to actually um, differentiate yourself from someone else. And um, it's. You know, it's, it's just like, for example, you might have certain marketing, and now my marketing is all about how we're going to keep you safe when you come to the office. Nice. People need that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it's really, it, it's really just um, persistence and a positive mindset, no matter what happens. Um, and and you, the business owner, really need a positive mindset because guess what? You have staff, employees. And it's Monday, and they might have a bad weekend. They come in, or they're tired, and they whatever. You don't. This is this is the part that you don't. You're a human being, but you don't have the right to come into the practice or office grumpy. Okay, because you're the leader, and if you're grumpy, then everybody else will follow. That's so right. if I'm not in that, that high energy vibrational mood in my car, I'll put on some really really like. Um, great song, you know, like Earth, Wind, and Fire, September, you know, like that. You play that in there, and you and you you can't not be happy when you play that song. And you put that on, you're gonna like be dancing in your car. And there's this is something I learned from Anthony Robbins. I'm a big Anthony Robbins guy. A long time ago, I went to a seminar. Before you open up that door to your office, to a treatment room, or what have you, picture that the handle as a bolt of lightning. Huh. And you touch it, and that lightning goes through your body and provides energy. I could be like one moment, like really like annoyed at something, and then I touch that handle and I'm like, "Hello, Mrs. Jones." You know, like we're, we're putting on a show. We're actors. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. We, and sometimes we have a matinee and an evening show. <laughs> we have yeah. some beyond like all day. 
Yeah. Yeah, nobody wants a grumpy, a, a grumpy boss. Nobody wants a grumpy owner. And we certainly don't want to be that way. So I like that. Yeah. I like that, that bolt of lightning. Now, you actually mentioned Tony Robbins. And you are a business advisor primarily to other podiatrists. You've right. written many books. I'm a business advisor. I work with a lot of different uh, business verticals trying to really focus on uh, just a few so that, you know, we can add real value. So how has, and you already touched on it, but how have mentors and coaches contributed to your success? Okay. Yeah. You know what? Um, to this very day, I have mentors, coaches. Um, you can't do it alone. Okay. Can't be, can't lone wolf it. You know, I can't be the only person out there. Um, it is the, I belong to a bunch of masterminds. It's the Napoleon Hill concept. You know, Thomas Edison needed to know how to make that light bulb. And he was, comes in this mastermind. He talks about his problems and all these people help him out, you know, just have a, continue to have a positive mindset. But that's what a good mastermind does. It helps each other um, solve your problems because you think one way and then other, uh, everyone else thinks, Maybe other ways, and they and they're helping you thinking outside the box because sometimes mm -hmm. you can't get out of that box and stuff. So uh, from day one, so this is my story. Um, I bought the practice for the first three months. I was losing on the average of seventy five hundred dollars a month mm. because um, uh, because one, the doctor before me was discharging patients because he was afraid that I would see that he was doing the wrong things and the patients would. So, um, soon. so he was afraid, so he started discharging patients. But uh, one day I got this fax, and this fax comes through. And it says, how to run your medical practice. Two-day event, $99 in New York City. I said, I said, thank you, God. This is what I need, you know? So <laughs> I go, and um, I'm listening and listening. And, of course, you know, I'm, I'm 29 at the time. Third, I'm not yet 29, and I'm like, didn't realize when you go to these inexpensive events, they're there to sell you stuff. Right? That's right. <laughs> I, I, learned, I learned that too. <laughs> so at the end, you know, of each day, I'm meeting with their their coach, their salesperson. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, after hours of speaking with him, I laid down two credit cards of eighteen thousand dollars. Okay, like, I'm three hundred thousand dollars in debt. I just mm. gave you $18,000. I'm like staying at the ceiling at night, can't sleep. Like, what the hell did I just do? Mm -hmm. And I, they flew me out to LA and I spent a week learning how to run a business and then they gave me a private uh, consultant coach for the year. After that one year, Mark, I made more money that one year than the doctor I bought the practice from in any one of his given 17 years of business. Awesome. And so, you, one, you need a coach will give you a game plan that you work mm -hmm. together with. That's right. You're now accountable. That's the biggest thing what a coach does. I'm a personal trainer. Why? Because the only time I can work out is around six, six thirty in the morning, and I work out five days a week. And if I have an appointment, I'm keeping it. Oh, I will tell you how many times like it's so early in the morning. You know, like um, it's four thirty. I'm up, but this happens to me. I wake up early. I do all my work, and now it's time to go to the gym. I'm like, one, I'm like involved in something. I want to continue. You have that feeling that, oh, I know it's time. To oh, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in my I'm zone like, now. I'm in my oh, zone. Yeah. I'm in the rabbit hole. I don't want to come out. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. But I got an appointment. I got to leave at 6 o'clock to get to them at 6.30. And then I'm, when I'm there, oh, I'm, I could be working out for an hour and a half. It's like once right. I get there. So – that's what they do. They set the game plan and they make you accountable for it in Absolutely. every aspect of your life. I had it for a life coach when I needed a life coach in my life at one time after my uh, divorce. And I have it. I have a uh, Tony Robbins coach that keeps me in my game plan for my other areas of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I have a mentor. His name is Rem Jackson. who's my business partner as well, as well mm -hmm. as a consultant business. Um, and um, so, yeah, it just keeps you accountable on a path. I don't think you can Absolutely. get to where you want to go and scale your business and get to the next level unless you have somebody around you that helps you. I love it. I love it. And I agree. It's funny because when I started my business, I was like, coach, I can't afford a coach. I'm a coach. Mm. I'll figure this out. You know, and then when the coach hits you with a bill, you know, they say, okay, well, this is what it's good. You go, what? Like, I'm in debt. You want me to, no, 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 no. I'll figure it out. And I did that for a long time. And I mean, I got 
somewhere. I got my own office, but I remember the same situation. I was there one struggling to get work done. It was nine o'clock at night. I'm in tears and I'm like, I can't do this again. I gotta find somebody to help me get through that glass right. ceiling. And ever since then I've had a coach. So even as a coach, I have a coach. Even as a coach, mm -hmm. you have a coach. And it's right. so valuable. It's one of the best investments you can make when you find that right coach. It, right. Then it, it just pays for itself. So study ROI, people, because it yes. makes a difference. Right? So, yeah. wait, so, Mark, do you, do you like, realize that um, you could, like, look at someone else's business and know what's going, what they need to do to fix it or get to the next level? But sometimes you, you know the answers, but when it comes to yours, like, so that moment where you came to see what you need to do until you get someone else to help you to like see it from the outside. Absolutely. When you're in the box, it's hard to see it. When you're standing absolutely. from the outside of the box. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You, you said it exactly. I mean, it's, it's, <clears throat> It's just that way. I can analyze. I, I look at so many owners and say, oh, no, 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 you need to do this, 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 this. Boom, and you'll be fine. And then I sit in my own office and I sit here and I go, oh, what am I going to do right now? You know, <laughs> and then a the coach says, hey, look, you, you, you're not focused. And he, he holds you accountable. And he says, you said this was your goal. This, if this is your goal, then why are you doing this? So you're right. I mean, it's so much easier to dissect someone else's business than to dissect your own, you know, so absolutely coaching is it's it's, it's incredible um and I, I love that and you have you have multiple coaches right so that that's right. valuable make that investment um I, I think i'm running up on my time and i don't want to go over um every week we have a, a weekly mastermind session that's what i call it some one of my other clients actually said it's a mastermind mark that's what it is mm -hmm. i was calling it a vibe session a round table no it's a mastermind but we we kind of make it thematic so I have this bonus question that I ask on my owners. When we get together on our weekly uh, mastermind, we, we come up with a, a statement and then we see how it applies to business. I'm going to throw it at you and see how fast you're on your feet. All righty. Okay. So how can you apply this statement to your business? It is better to fail in originality than to succeed in imitation. Cool. Okay, great. Great question. Especially uh, today, especially today in, in social media. If you look at your social media, your Instagram, your Facebook, and all the people that are getting, you know, um, attention and uh, actually monetizing this attention, it's because they're being themselves. They're not boring. Uh, they're out there. They're showing their real lives. They, people want people want real today. They you can't fake it today to make it. You can't do that anymore because they see you. You're out there, okay. And if you're not out there, they're gonna go with the person that is out there and just putting them all online. They, you know what, here's the funny thing is, the people who are actually showing online, I tried this and didn't work, it, I failed at this, people relate to that because they, they want the truth. Everything it's looks so like, people are like, oh, I'm so pretty, I wake up 4.30 in the morning, look, my hands down, my makeup's down, look at me, you know, that's, that's nonsense, okay? You know, and, and whatever they do, they're posing, they look great, that's not what we want. So be original, be who you are, and you don't need a lot of patience. You don't need a lot of clients. You don't need um, 100 million followers, okay? What you need is a group of people in your niche that understand you and want what you have and you solve their problems and, they, and then you have your people and you, they'll buy from you. You have a group of people that keep on buying from you because of who you are. So, and you're not going to please every single individual out there and, <laughs> and you have to stop thinking you you can you just have to like these are my peeps right they get right. me okay right. and i'm going to be me i'm going to be original and i'm going to succeed with the this group love that's it. all i need because that's yeah. who i can relate to this is who i can sell to this is mm -hmm. who can be my perfect client and that that's the other thing is the great thing i teach podiatrists right now the great thing about this there's nothing great about covid19 but come to your right. business is it's that Yes, yeah, silver lining. You don't have to have lots and lots of patience. You have to figure out that 80 20 Pareto rule mm -hmm. that 20% yep. of people pay that give you 80% of the income yes. that you love to take care of. Now, you can spend more time with the patients that you want to treat. You don't have to treat you know, the foot and ankle. We treat everything. But maybe right. you want to be a sports medicine person, just take care of kids. You can take do what you love to do and have passion. Like it and, and make a great living, probably a better living. 
yeah. being passionate Absolutely. about what you're doing every single day. Absolutely. Love it. I love it. Yeah. You know, um, you hit a lot of different things there. That makes me think of the statement, riches and niches. You probably heard of it, right? That's it's right. Riches yeah. and niches. And so if you can start to filter down and become an expert in one, man, you, you got it. And it's original, right? And I like what else you said. Can't please everybody, right? But if you find there was another, I forgot the gentleman's name. Oh, my goodness. You create your tribe, right? Your tribe. Mm-hmm. People who know and like you. And if you have a tribe, now you're, now you're okay. You can always add that, to your that, tribe. Is that Seth Godin? You know, Seth Godin? Might be, might be. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm not as well read as you, so I don't remember author names. <laughs> it's like with musicians. My wife is into music, so we know the same music from when we were kids. And I'm like, that song is great. And she's like, I believe Babyface wrote it. I'm like, I don't know who wrote what. I just know the song is good. <laughs> but, but that's one thing I was going to mention about, you know, thus far when I'm interviewing folks and I see the really successful owners, they're also well read. They're well read. That's something I want to share with everyone. Right. Uh, and that's something I'm trying to do for myself. Uh, and I mean, no, don't, I'm a tax guy. That's how I started. I don't want to read the IRS code book. That's boring. You know, I, I'm a business coach. I don't want to just read how to be a business coach. I want to read how to run a business. In the end, that's what it's all about. You are a podiatrist, but you've read many books on business because that's what it's about. It's a difference. And so that's okay. another thing I want to share. So awesome. I, I'm going to start learning author names like you. Yeah, but that dude said try. And I was like, okay. <laughs> All right. So anyway, I, Doc, I want to make sure that I don't kill, kill you with, my, with your time. That's I want right, to no thank problem. you so much for this, um, this interview because you dropped knowledge on our listeners. And I, I think people are going to get a pen and they're going to start writing this one. They might replay this one 10 different times. Pull out the points if you're smart. Pull out the points and apply it to their business. And they're going to be successful as well. Thank you so much, Doc. Thank you, man. It was a pleasure. It was a lot of fun. Awesome. Thanks. Talk to you.